Okay. So everyone just stay it. silent. We're we're in. We're started. Thanks, boys, for joining. Let me uh I'm gonna do a little intro. We got Shane Crandall, who I met at church when I was five months old. And he was ten months old. Then three months later, I met Scott Crandall when he was born at church. Well, he wasn't born at church. That's where he was born. Yeah, he came out of my mother's womb. No. And, uh, we couldn't afford a hospital. <laughs> in South Provo is where we met. And then we got Wyatt Grow, who I met. I think I met you freshman year at Timview. You didn't go to fair, right? I did just for eighth grade. Oh, so I met you in eighth grade then. Prior to that, he was privileged with private school. Yeah. Oh, sounds familiar, Scott. And were you? Yeah, well, you know, our parents had to make a bet on somebody. <laughs> and then his little brother Alex, I met a little bit later. Alex, it's, Alex is the one that's orbiting the Earth. So welcome, boys. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Tim. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> Okay, so we could tell stories for hours or days. But I got, I got 10 We're minutes. Alex in space, he might have a little bit longer. He's moving at 17,000 miles an hour right now. Say that again. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we, we have a number of space related questions for Alex. Alex. <laughs> When a rocket is launched up there yeah. and it's trying to meet the space station, mm. how does it match the speed of the space station when it's going 17,600 miles per hour? Well, it's called a Hohmann transfer. And what happens in the Hohmann transfer <laughs> is you speed up or slow down in order to make your orbit match. Have you been watching Away with Hillary Swank? I've never seen such This thing. is all from Interstellar. This oh, is, I've never seen anything. No, this is all you from, have to enter the fifth dimension. This is, this, this is all from Tales from South Provo. This is, I, I learned about the Holman transfer on Tales from South Provo. <laughs> People in South Provo aren't that smart. <laughs> Guy. Just because okay. you went to private school. Yeah, I got a story about Scott in private school. Oh, great. So, well, it's more about me and Shane while Scott was in private school. <laughs> So one day, one day I came, I walked home from Provost Elementary with Shane and we were watching DuckTales, you know, after school. And Scott wasn't around because he was at private school, the smart school for like long hours. And then before I know it, I wake up, I had fallen asleep on the Crandall's couch and Shane is nowhere around. <laughs> So I'm just sitting in his house by myself and I'm probably left a big drool stain on the couch. DuckTales is long over. I think it was tailspin at this point. Or gargoyles. <laughs> and me, I oh, yeah. up anytime. So then I, I start like making my way out of the house and I meet Shane's mom at the entrance. I'm like, where'd Shane go? Oh, he's gone. He went on his paper route. Scott went to private school and I had a blue collar job. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I also had a blue collar job, Shane. Come on. I had, <laughs> what was I that? Had to, uh, I also had a paper route. I was delivering to the trailer parks. Even, well, the, even further into South Oh, Provo, that was to ground you. No. That was so mom could ground you. No, what's yeah. got me? I understand. Uh, the color of the collared shirt that he wore to private school was a light baby blue. So, yes, blue. <laughs> right. Right. Uh -huh. And you were in the billing department at the Daily Herald, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right? no, it was, uh, yeah, accounts receivable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was kind of weird Shane didn't wake me up. I guess it was nice of him to let me sleep, but kind of awkward. I'm a poor sleeper, Tim, so I understand the need to, to let people lie where they lie. You know, yeah. let a sleeping Tim, not, sleeping Tim lie. Okay. Lay? That's good. Yeah, let's leave him get lay. Get laid. Yeah. PG-13. <laughs> it happens. It happens in those movies. Okay. From what I'm told. I've never seen one. 
Al's out of orbit now. Where's Al? <laughs> did, did, uh, Al Al's battery in his car may have just gone dead. <laughs> okay, uh, Wyatt and Scott, I'm gonna need your help on this one. So, is this nipple I, related? I started working at Magleby's. Scott was manager. Wyatt was already working there as a server. And I got hired on. And <clears throat> Scott was paranoid that I was going to give him a bad name for, su for uh, <clears throat> suggesting that I'd be hired. So every time Doc would... Uh, was I concerned that your stubby arms couldn't properly lift the tray appropriately or reach across the table to deliver a drink or what? <laughs> no, you were concerned that Doc was going to get mad because when new hires started working, he'd always watch them and make sure they were smiling all the time and smiling at the customers. And you're like, Tim, you got to smile all the time. I'm like, why well, smile when I, <clears throat> when I talk to the people? You're like, no, you got to smile always. Anytime, looks at, anytime Doc looks at you, you need to be smiling. Uh, so I'm like, I just need to walk around with a smile on my face. He goes, yeah, or you said, yeah. And I'm like, I can't do that. I have to be genuinely amused to smile. So you and With your I, upbringing, that was probably really hard. I know. Southies are, are born and bred in depression. So I don't know how you can do that unless it's forced or you're being paid for it. Money always makes Southies happy. Yeah, the pressure was on. And so I'm like, I don't know how to do it. So you and Wyatt pulled me aside and gave me a story that I could think of that would always make me smile. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? Is this the shower curtain story? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the context of, of telling it to you to make you happy, but I remember. It's working story. right now. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't remember if it was Scott or Wyatt, but one of you told me the story. And it worked, and it still works to this day. Whenever I go to the DMV <laughs> to take a picture, I think of this story, and it brings a smile on my face. <laughs> so, Wyatt, you tell it. Sure. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> exactly what we were spending our afternoon doing, but kind of the same way that you got left alone in the Crandall's basement while watching a show. I was watching a show and got left alone in the Crandall's basement. And the only restroom was upstairs. So I'm like, well, I, I got to go use the restroom. I'm just going to go up. And I, <laughs> I go into the bathroom and I'm going to be sitting down for this type of bathroom experience. So I drop my pants, I turn around and right as I'm lowering myself onto the seat, I kind of in my peripheral vision, <laughs> I catch something moving that doesn't, you know, that shouldn't be there, something out of place. And it's just Scott's head a per perched above the shower curtain looking down at me. And he just goes, hi. <laughs> <laughs> waited. He waited like 10 <laughs> seconds too long to announce that he was in there. The, the shower wasn't, first of all, the shower wasn't going. There was no audible scrubbing taking place. It, it is totally unknown to me what in the world he was doing in there i still can't remember why i was in there because i wasn't as i recall i was not in there purposely trying to frighten you i thought it was something where like i was home and you and shane came back and i was in the bathroom i don't know if i was like cleaning something up or something i don't know why i was in the shower and i don't recall this being something where it's like oh i hear why it's coming I'm going to close the shower curtain and hide in the tub and frighten the guy. I was, for some reason in my mind, I was just in the tub already. And I just, I think it was a closed. classic tale of the Crandall's had chores and why it was downstairs reading the far side when we were doing our chores. I think you were putting the shower curtain back up after mom washed it. Oh, I think you were hanging the rings on it. That probably makes That's why sense. your head was up there too. There's no other reason for you to be in the freaking shower with all your clothes on. <laughs> I don't know. Who either, knows man. how? 
Heaven knows well, how long. A, that's a pretty logical explanation. When you when you first told it to me, that's what you told me. You said you were putting the shower curtain on. Well, Thank Tim goodness. remembers all. Thanks goodness for Tim's memory. Seriously. <laughs> well, I didn't want to scare Wyatt, so just just kind of a gentle. Uh, hi. Hey. <laughs> well, what's funny is that you waited for him to <laughs> sit down. You didn't tell him right when he walked in. Well, I mean, a guy's got stuff on his mind walking into the bathroom, you know. He's not expecting anyone. You don't want to, you don't want to startle the guy, you know. As Have very, a sphincter clench up, and then he's, you know, can't go for like a while. Oh, yeah, no. That's very You want to be nice and relaxed, at ease. I, I like to put people at ease, you know. Well, that story put me at ease because every time I just picture Scott <laughs> with his head over the <laughs> shower curtain and Wyatt with his pants at his ankles, in a squat, and then just the word, <laughs> hi. <laughs> hi. Hey. Hey, buddy. Um, we got, do we lose Alex? You still there, Alex? Uh, uh, I'm in low on but I'm here for the time being. Tell me, tell us my favorite story about you at Magalby's with the guy that forgot Valentine's Day. Dude. <laughs> all right before before i go oh it was february 15th and um the couple came, this couple came in the woman visibly upset from the second they walked through the door the guy showed up early to like put flowers on their table obviously doing all he can to try and make this night special <laughs> the problem being that this man had the most active loogie glands you've ever encountered. The man was just hawking loogies constantly. As he was walking back out to his car in order to get the girl to bring her in, he went over to a fake potted plant in the lobby of Maggleby's and just spit right into the base of the potted plant. <laughs> then... I would, so I was their server at their table, and when I came and asked for drinks, he asked for some paper napkins, because Maggleby's had, you know, polyester napkins. I'm like, uh, yeah, that's, sure, yeah, no problem. So grab him a stack of paper napkins. The, didn't, you know, just an observer, casual, casual observer, as I kind of come in and out of the table over the next hour, they then get up and go, and I come back. And the man had ordered apple beer, and the remaining 30% of his glass of apple beer was just full of individually identifiable <laughs> loogies in his apple beer. <laughs> and then on top of that, he had proceeded to take all the paper napkins they generously provided, spit in them, and stuffed them into every crevice of his booth. <laughs> stuffed it all along the back, all along the side. So just with, with ooey gooey hands, I had to retrieve all napkins. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a night to behold. It was a lucky girl. Yeah, and I was there she was. that night. I was there working with you that night, and I was an eyewitness to the suspended loogies in the apple beer it looked like some weird fetus or something and i could not all, figure we out all, we all like... i could not figure out how he got the loogies into his apple beer like if he got them through the straw or if he straight up just spit it right in front of his wife at their romantic halloween dinner <laughs> I, I i mean there's no way you share a life with a man like that and aren't aware of this habit <laughs> so i think he was using it like an old timey spittoon you know just like he was chewing tobacco but <laughs> instead it's just pieces of his brain that he is able to conjure up pieces of his brain the lungs that he's able to <laughs> hawk from the back of his throat well and the only reason why he asked you for the napkins is because after he hawked the loogie on the side of the pot he turned around and made eye contact with you and, and saw me. 
you saw him do it. <laughs> so that's why he was fully him. caught in the act. <laughs> Uh, Fully caught in the act. <clears throat> All right, Peach, you ready? Yeah, my phone was about to die, so I had to plug it in. I don't know if there's a lot of feedback, but the only way I could charge it was by turning on the car. Uh, so okay. that's that's just the, that's I'm just the oxygenator. The in my car. That's just the oxygenator in the space station. <laughs> I, I apologize. That that feedback's on me. <laughs> all okay, right lay it on me tim this is one of my favorite stories of you is when you had to go get your uvu volleyball uniform at the mall oh <laughs> <laughs> do you remember oh, yeah. enough to share it of course uh i mean i might butcher it a little bit it's been it's been a year or two um I played volleyball at, at UVU, but it was more of a club team than like a school sponsored team. So the school didn't provide basically anything. You basically paid to play. And the team all decided that they wanted to get these team shorts from Zoomies at the Provo Town Center. So uh, I just balked at going down there because I had to pay for them, right? And I was a poor Southie. So it had been like three or four weeks and I was supposed to pick them up and I hadn't picked them up yet. So I go down there, it's the middle of the day and there's some chick at the counter and I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Shane. I'm supposed to pick up these shorts. And she's like, you were supposed to, she was kind of rude, right? She's like, you were supposed to pick these up like three weeks ago. I'm like, well, I didn't, but I'm here. So if they're still here, can I have them? She's like, yeah. She goes in the back and gets them. And she said, oh my gosh, dude, I can't remember all the details of this. She comes up, she's really annoyed at me for some reason, like she had to store the shorts in her own room or something, I don't know. And I go to pay and she goes, it was something like credit or debit and I'm all, and I said something and she goes, did I stutter? And I'm like, yeah, you kind of did. And I think you have a little bit of a lisp too. And she goes, you're a jerk. And I said, whoa, I was just joking there or whatever, right? I'm totally butchering the story because I don't remember the details. But <laughs> basically, long story short, one of my friends from the team went in like 20 minutes later, got his shorts. And she's like, man, what did you see that girl? And I told him, he goes, dude, I noticed in like five seconds that she had a list. So I was just joking because the girl said, did I stutter? Which I thought was kind of rude. But I'm like, if you have a speech impediment, you don't bring up you know bring attention to another speech impediment right like a stutter <laughs> so i was just joking trying to smooth things over and instead i made fun of a girl who had a lisp and you didn't and realize it didn't in realize your defense, it i think i was there with you and as i recall she was giving you a lot of lip a lot of attitude one way or another so i think it was justifiable for you to give her a little bit back and i will say i Thank also you. didn't notice the lisp so there you go now, Scott's a good, that's a good brother right there because the public defender, a.k.a. Wyatt Grubb, would probably take her side. I, you know, I think he committed a hate crime. <laughs> if, I have to be honest, if I have to be honest, I think that's a prosecutable hate crime. Uh, back in the day, no, it wasn't, and I think we've passed the statute of limitations, thank heavens, but thank you, Wyatt. <laughs> I'll see you in small claims. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who's going to, who wants to tell me the chicken whopper story? I think Wyatt probably is the best here, given it was his sister. Honestly, I think I'd like to give Tim the chance to tell it because he's told it so many times, he told me. <laughs> but I will tell it if you want me to tell it. I mean, the, the best part about this story is that Tim was never there, right? And this is a story. Tim was 7,000 miles away. <laughs> I have I have no, told the story I. many times as though it was my own, but I think you should tell it why. And then I think I think the others should all say the phrase "chicken whopper" when you're done. <laughs> we'll all take turns saying the word "chicken whopper." That sounds great. <laughs> so uh, this story took place 
in Thailand, 2004, give or take. We're there uh, with a bunch of our, our group of friends, but we also brought along my sister who was kind of an unusual traveling companion for us because we liked, we were very comfortable in the cheapest hostel in town with or without AC, with or without, you know, pests living there. And so um, she's just a little bit more of a picky traveler than we are. And after probably three weeks in country, we finally make it to like a more developed part of Thailand where there's a Burger King and she's really excited. We're actually all excited. And she goes up to the counter and Thailand, you know, isn't like some of these other countries where you're going to have a good percentage of the population that speaks English. So she goes to the Burger King counter and she's looking up at the menu and at full normal American pace, she says, okay, yeah, can I get the um, number six, but I don't want any tomatoes, no onions, no lettuce, no mayo, just like just the bun and the chicken for the chicken whopper, just like that fast. <laughs> and the lady just kind of stares at her. And then she's like, you know, just no tomato, no, you know, repeats it. <laughs> and then the lady who calls out the orders to the kitchen grabs the microphone and just goes, chicken whopper. <laughs> no, no special, you know, obviously doesn't relay any of her special requests. Chicken whopper. <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> <laughs> As I recall, too, like each of us had already gone up and ordered and also like my screen's not working, but we'd almost been like super you know, overdone it yeah. to just say, I'd like a number, number one. one, please, <laughs> a number one. Number and four. just made it as simple as possible. And then Lindsay gets up there and goes for the... Uh, no, you know, yeah. just no, no mayo, no lettuce, no tomatoes, uh, just like the chicken and the bun and the cheese and... <laughs> Okay, I want you each to say chicken whopper like the worker did. <laughs> I'm pointing to you, Shane. Oh, I'm up in the top corner. Say chicken, chicken whopper. Chicken whopper. <laughs> chicken whopper. <laughs> chicken whopper. <laughs> chicken whopper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm glad that story has brought you so much joy over the years, Tim. Oh, I love it, man. I love it so much. I can just picture the girl just being ticked off and annoyed. It's, I don't think she was ticked off or annoyed. She was just clueless. so confused. She had no idea what just someone so just said to her. <laughs> oh, really? I thought she was annoyed and just like stared Lindsay down while she said No, she, oh, they, they no. care so much about pleasing their, pleasing their guests. Kapkum ka. She was just so confused. Yeah, kapkum ka. <laughs> Chicken Wampa. Yeah, no, she just had no idea what this redheaded American chick had just spouted at her. She uh, repeated the only word she understood, which was <laughs> Chicken Wampa. That whole spiel. Yeah. You guys uh, inspired me to go to Thailand <clears throat> based on that story. <laughs> and to order a Chicken Wampa. Not the beautiful the beaches, the $5, the $5 massages. The uh, baby men. That and when you told me about how they they can't say the letter V in their language. <laughs> like do you guys are you guys ready to get in the WAN? Get in the WAN and enjoy the view. The view? I lost you there. I also okay. did. I also did, but I I'll get in the WAN. Yeah, you guys were telling me stories of them saying you got to sign the voucher before you can get in the WAN. <laughs> Enjoy the and then, and then Enjoy you, went on this, you went on this hike and the, the guide yelled at you at the top of the peak, Enjoy the Wii <laughs> Yeah. One, it's an adorable thing about the Thai English accent. So I was somewhere in the United States with Shane. I don't remember where, it was like. Probably Provo. Well, it was, it was on a Color Me Rad trip. So I think it was like <laughs> Miami or 
somewhere. I can't Omaha. remember. <clears throat> Maybe Omaha. We went to a, a Thai restaurant and Shane ordered Tom Kai veggie soup. And the guy brought it out. And much to my <clears throat> pleasure, when he handed it to Shane, he goes, Tom Kai wedgie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just what Tim needed. Yeah. All right. I'll take I'll take the next story. And you guys you guys can chime in when applicable. <laughs> so my dad, Bernie, pretty uh, laid back, casual guy. There was one time ever in my life where he sat me down and had a talking to me. It wasn't, it wasn't the birds and the bees. It wasn't in junior high. It wasn't in high school for staying out late. It wasn't for not doing my homework. It was after this story. So the four of us were in college and we'd go play volleyball, sand volleyball. And usually the four of us was like the core group of guys we needed to have two on two. And we were going to play at Carriage Cove that day of the, the many venues we had for volleyball. And uh, I was... I like to think I'm a pretty dependable, punctual person, but I was a little bit late this day. And so I was was speeding down University Parkway past the baseball field. And I got pulled over by a BOU cop and they're they're not very lenient. And I, I don't think I was going that fast, probably like 10 over, but this BOU cop gave me a ticket and drove off and I was ticked because now I was even more late and I knew you guys were sitting there waiting for me and you couldn't play till the fourth man arrives. And so out of frustration, I punched the horn of the geo skunk. I punched the (laughs) steering wheel and the horn stuck. (laughs) So it's just like, I'm like, oh, freak. So I'm like pulling on it, trying to get it to stop and it won't. Luckily, the cop had already driven away. <clears throat> so I start driving. I'm making my way over to Carriage Cove, and my horn is just blaring the whole time. And when I get to like a stoplight, I could kind of pull back and pull some of the pressure off, and it would stop for a second. But it wasn't very, <clears throat> it wasn't working that well. It stopped for a few seconds and it'd go again. And so like the light would turn green, I'd start driving and start honking again. So I'm just driving around Provo with my horn honking. And then I get pretty close. I'm at like Old Mill and I'm at a stop sign and there's a kid crossing the the crosswalk in front of me. And I'm holding holding the horn. I'm like, oh, please no, please no, please no. And right when the kid gets in front of me, the horn starts honking. (laughs) <laughs> so I scare this kid right when he's in front of my car and he keeps driving or he keeps walking and my horn never stops. I'm just honking the whole time and then I just pull away, drive up, pull into Carriage Cove where you guys are all sitting there warming up, ready for volleyball. My horn's just blaring. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how did long it blare did it- the whole time? So when we didn't you go and disconnect it somehow. So you guys came over and you told me that you could hear me coming from a couple blocks away. You came over and why you helped me. I had a cassette tape and we like wedged it in like underneath where the pressure is being pushed on the steering wheel. So we wedged it in to pull the pressure off. So it stopped. So then wow. we went and played volleyball for like 45 minutes. And then it started honking and like it started going off again. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'm just going to go home now. (laughs) (laughs) Party's over. Was this in 1989? You had a cassette tape in your freaking car? The car (laughs) was 19 freaking probably 80, 89. What was it? It was a Model T. Wasn't it a Model T? 
the geo skunk man you think you think i had a dvd player or a cd player no way of course not Tim was man. still hitting hitting play and record on his at home when he when his favorite song came on the radio uh he, he got meet virginia by by train with no <laughs> intro <It was> perfect <laughs> sell promo dude <laughs> Um, so anyway, I drove home and then my dad, I remember paying money. Do you guys remember? <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say it, it's not a group story, but do you guys remember that? I think it was called the box. It was like a, it was like a pay per view. Yeah. Actually, the view music videos, music videos. It was on like channel I, 58. That actually sounds not far off and i remember i i spent probably eight bucks trying to hear uh the freshman by <laughs> freshman by the the verve pipe i believe verve pipe. Yep. but yeah, yeah. I, kept, I kept calling in trying to get that that hit on the radio or on the box didn't someone, box, didn't someone think that the that song was about um an unwanted pregnancy there, there was some line a condom broke. like a condom broke or something Dude, it was 45 were, 40 cents Cents. Oh yeah, they were all it? About, it was like instead of like for these cents, all about it was like forty cents. Forty cents. Like 40 I cents think Namro probably came up with that. Yeah. Um, it was autobiographical for Namro. <laughs> oh, I can't what? remember. I know the girl that thought that. It was Amy Bolton, wasn't it? Yes, it was Amy Bolton. She's the one that thought that. Not Amy Bolton, dude. Amy Bolton. Amy Bolda. Michael Bolton? Oh. <laughs> Michael Bolton. Kenny G thought Bolton. that? What was yeah, Kenny Yeah, Kenny Loggins. <laughs> Kenny Rogers. It was Kenny Rogers. The gambler. Yep, he was mad about the chicken. <clears throat> anyway, back to the Geo Skunk. <laughs> Smooth segue. <laughs> My, so I drove home. My dad pulled the fuse out. And then we went and got, got it fixed. And then after that is when my dad sat me down, had the only talking to, and he told me that I need to control my temper. Did you guys lose me? <laughs> yeah, you did for a second. We heard the life yeah, lesson. Okay. We lost yeah. you for a second. but We got you for the punchline. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, are we ready to talk to you? Yeah, you gave, me, gave me about, talk. Me, about <laughs> me and you. Yeah, yeah, you can tell that one. Are you going to tell that one though? <laughs> no, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't know your dad used such kind of unique expressions, and I felt like I felt like this was a unique expression that he used at the time. But um, I had gone to Lake Powell. And as a joke, I had kind of worn a Speedo one day on the lake the whole day. So and funny. I got horribly sunburned right up next to my crotch, right? Just like, <laughs> so I just thought it was kind of funny. So I came home from Lake Powell and I just thought it was kind of funny. So I took, I'm like, Tim, you got to see this, buddy. Let's go into the bathroom. <laughs> You're so at my house. In, yeah, at your house. So we go in there. I pull my pants down. I show you my tan line and you start laughing and then we go out and just like, that's the end of it. And I think before we leave the house, like, I'm like, Hey buddy, let's go to the car. And your dad's like, Hey, Hey Tim, can you just hang back for a second? And he goes to you now, son, I have a lot of trust in you, but I am curious as a devil as to what you and your buddy were laughing about in that bathroom. together." <laughs> <laughs> that sounded about was that about how it went yeah curious yeah, I, I, that, I think that's a good segue in, too. Um, i was gonna say that's a good segue into uh, another story involving me and Wyatt in a bathroom in the tub <laughs> she's like most of these are kind of occurring in the bathroom with two grown men together there's an all of them have the common denominator of Wyatt, interestingly enough. Yeah, it's odd. Seems like a sexual predator of sorts. Um, you know, just a Northie preying on Southeast, just Southeast trying to get ahead, you know? Um, trying so, to F your way to the top, sure. 
this one was uh, came to my recollection recently um, because Susie, what was Susie's main name? Feldman. Feldman. Susie yeah. Feldman Whittier. sent me the picture. Feldman, yeah, Whittier um, sent me the picture. So, as as backstory on this one, so we in high school and college frequently played in volleyball tournaments um, in the spring and the fall down in St. George. And I was a pasty white, not muscly, uh, somewhat hairy, borderline obese, borderline obese um, <laughs> college age kid. And at these tournaments frequently, like the other, you know, the other people would be these beefed up dudes from a hurricane or something, you know, intimidating us with their beefiness and their muscles and their fake tans and stuff. And, uh, and so the night before the tournament, um, somehow Wyatt and I decided that we were going to try to intimidate them. And so we were in probably a day's in or a holiday in or something like that, some crappy hotel in St. George. And, uh, we took out some hair trimmers. Wyatt and I entered the bathroom, closed the door behind us. I took off my shirt, got in the tub, and I said, Wyatt, I need you to do this for me. <laughs> and Wyatt uh, trimmed pecs and abs into my body hair um, so that we could intimidate the other teams. And the key phrase before Wyatt turned on the hair clippers was, Wyatt, it was a very similar tone as to, you know, the tone that I gave him when I was in the shower. Hold on real quick before you deliver the punchline. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know how your hand mixer has like one, two, three, four, five, and then it has boost. You know, it has like that one gear that's even a better, higher gear. So these clippers had regular mode and they had turbo. That's now you can deliver good, the line. Good. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and in a, in a calm and trusting tone, I say to Wyatt as he's about to kind of shave his masterpiece into my body. Wyatt, please don't go turbo on my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> so he shaved, uh, he shaved pecs and abs in for me where there were none. And then the next day I take off my shirt at the tournament and there'd be, you know, the other teams on the other side of the court being like, Are those, is that what, you know, they're, they're 30 feet away. And they're like, is that, is that like painted on? Uh, no, 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 that's hair. That's shaved in. That's, that's all shaved. natural. Yeah. Well, and we didn't immediately shave it off after the tournament either. And so we go back to King Henry uh, in Provo and where we're like swimming or playing volleyball and there's lots of babes, babes walking by. And from a distance, I'm sure Scott looked amazing, you know, because it was like <laughs> when you're drawing a buff guy in, in fourth grade, you know, you draw like a curved line for some pecs and then just like a straight up rock you know six pack so from far away there's these girls are just checking scott out and then as they get closer they're just like is that hair oh <laughs> just the disgust yeah. so disgusted yeah we had we had girls get out of the pool and come over and try to join us <laughs> in the volleyball court because of scott's abs <laughs> <laughs> okay that that reminds me of a couple couple stories <laughs> <laughs> so in high school when we went to St. George for a volleyball tournament it was probably spring break spring break or like UEA fall break <clears throat> we so we spent the weekend in St. George and we had already been in days in or holiday in or wherever we were for one night and then on the second night, we had a policy of whoever was going to play in the volleyball tournament the next day got to sleep in the beds rather than the floor because we had a bunch of people shoved in the room. <laughs> so the first night, TJ Ruskus and Scott Nemro and some of those guys got to sleep in the beds. But on the, the night before the tournament, the four of us got the beds because we were we were the four playing the next day. So 
Shane and Scott, the two brothers, are sharing a bed. Wyatt and I are sharing a bed, and these beds are not very big. <laughs> and there were some other people in, from our high school that were in St. George at the same time, and <clears throat> there were some people over at our hotel room hanging out. And <clears throat> I go to sleep because I'm excited. You know, I got to get my rest for a big day of tournament the next morning. So I'm sleeping and <clears throat> I am, I'm awakened from my slumber by, by some, some elbowing in the back. <laughs> so I start getting, I'm, I'm half asleep, half awake, and I'm getting, I'm getting hit in the back and I'm kind of confused and I'm still mostly asleep. And as, as I continue to get hit in the back, I, I wake up a little bit more, a little bit more, and I hear this noise. Sounds like stirring macaroni. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> macaroni getting stirred. <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> over the next few minutes, as I slowly come to my senses, I realize why it's making out with a girl on the bed with me. <laughs> And those weren't elbows. <laughs> yeah. So I'm laying there like, oh, man, what am I going to do? Should I just take one for the team and just sit here and let Wyatt have his fun? Should I should Definitely. I noise? Should, Definitely the thing to do. <laughs> should I roll over? Should, should I make a, a joke? Should I make, you know, say a funny line or whatever? So I do what any good friend would do, and I just lay there and take one for the team. And finally they finish, and she gets up and goes to the bathroom. And I roll over and make eye contact with Wyatt. And he's like, you're awake? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, thanks, buddy. I'm like, you're welcome. And then I, I roll back over, close my eyes. <laughs> pretend to be asleep for when she comes back out oh <laughs> uh, that is a true boon companion right there <laughs> thank you Tim. didn't that happen again in have a soup eye yep <laughs> right yeah and it was why and why and some girl something about being close to tim <laughs> took my libido to the next level <laughs> yep, got the boon wiggy it's like oysters and chocolate but in Have a Soup by you were between Shane and me. So Shane got disturbed too. And this time though, there was the the noise of the sleeping bag rubbing on tarp. So it was a lot a lot harder to conceal that time. <clears throat> For what it's worth, I can't hear anything you're saying right now. Oh. Same. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, look at that guy. Does he have a Southie connection? Internet connection? No, right now? They don't have broadband down there, do they? He lives on the Silicon oh. Slopes. Oh, geez. Can you guys hear me? We lost him, dude. There we go. He's back. Tim, we lost you for a solid minute there. Sorry. <laughs> you can hear me, though, now. Back on. So what I was saying was, and have a soup by why it was between Shane and me. So we both got interrupted <clears throat> sleep and it was worse because we could hear the sleeping bag and the tarp rubbing the friction of the sleeping bag and the tarp against each other. So it was harder for you to conceal that time. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are good pals. How'd you sneak that girl in there, buddy? Levi brought her. It was his cousin. <laughs> okay, I got I got another one, Wyatt. Uh every time Tim opens his mouth. There we go. He's back. He's back. Sorry. So I don't know it's all south is in our poor internet. Yeah, are you what you have to do is you take the AOL CD out because your 100 hours are probably up. So you take it out, get
get a new CD from their mailbox and put it in. <laughs> okay, Wyatt. I'm here. Another bathroom story. Tell us about the time when you and your siblings all got interrogated about the lack of cleanliness in your parents' shower. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so this is when I was a child. I was young. And I think there was only one actual shower in the house. You know, they used to build homes differently. The only shower was in my parents' bathroom. And we would all use it. And one morning, I think we were, you know, just down eating cereal and watching cartoons or whatever. And my mom came down and she's like, hey, one of you, you know, used my shower and you made a big mess in there and I'd like you to clean it up. We all just kind of like, what, you know, just came came poo with your foot you know and it's and it's done what kind of mess you know nobody says a word nobody cops to anything so we just like keep on going on with our show my mom's just like no seriously one of you guys needs to go up there and clean it in fact you're all going up there until we find out who did this so we're like still confused we all march upstairs and we look in their bathtub which is or their shower which is um just white square tiles on the walls on the floor just like a perfect white backdrop and there, right next to the drain, are these two little turds, just fully regular, belong in a toilet turds. <laughs> we're just like, Julian and Margo? <laughs> You're two twins. And we're just like, oh my gosh, like who just pooped in the shower? Like, yeah, you know, it's becoming more clear why my mom was upset. And so we all just like are looking at each other, like, you, you, you. And finally, we point to my little brother, Alex. We're just like, Alex, did you do that? And he's like, what? I was just cleaning out my butthole. <laughs> That's the story. The, the, phrase, the phrase that lasted in our family and would be reused frequently was, what? I was just cleaning out my butthole. <laughs> How old was he? Perfectly reasonable. Four, five, not old. Which would make sense to him. Like, that's what you do in the shower is you clean yourself. Just <laughs> clean it on out. <laughs> drop, drop a turd or two if you've got one in there. Because poo is... Now he's an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I have a lot more stories written down, but that's probably good for this session, unless you guys have any more off the top of your head you want to share. You're the best keeper of, of stories and rememberer of stories. What else? Yeah, we'd, we'd lean on you. Okay. If we do this, again, uh, send, us a, send us a list so I don't butcher the story that I can't remember very well. I can make up pretty good details to make it flow better. <laughs> okay. One of, my, one of my friends, I told him about this and he's like, so basically you're just going to have people tell stories and then you're going to correct them on all the minor details. <laughs> <laughs> on what really happened. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I guess that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. Did you like my joke the other day when I Venmoed you a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should tell these guys. Um. Well, one of the classic jokes between me and Tim was when we were working at Maggleby's and he's just like, I don't know what it was going on, but he come up to me. He's like, Wyatt, I got some really bad news. And I'm like, what dude, did the government find out you have a job? <laughs> we were always joking. Tim was on welfare and he was subsisting purely on government cheese. And so, I mean, that was almost 20 years ago. And <laughs> Then the other day, for some reason, I saw a headline that uh, Trump had, you know, killed a stimulus bill that was going to give people coronavirus funds. And so I just thought, you know what, it's time to ping Tim again. And so I him again, dollar and said, money for cheese. Trump just killed the stimulus. <laughs> <laughs>
One dollar. <laughs> One dollar. Did that help, uh, Tim? Did that dollar go a long way? Did it hit you at the right time? Yeah, man. That reminds me when... Uh, Shouldn't buy good internet. <laughs> when... Um, one time you guys were all gambling. You were playing poker, blackjack or something at your at your house, Wyatt, and your dad was the house. And everyone showed up with money. And I showed up with a brick of cheese and slammed it <laughs> down on the table. I'm like, how many, how many chips can I get with this? <laughs> Papa Dro didn't know our history or our jokes, and he's looked at me like I was an idiot. <laughs> That would have been good for at least $14, right, buddy? That was a big hunk of cheddar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, thanks. That was a good time. We'll, uh, we'll do it again. And I'll give you a list ahead of time. That was good. Thanks, buddy. Send that was us, good, buddy. Good talking to you. Link. Hey, who watches these things anyways? <laughs> uh, I have like 13 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. But the point of it is, is mostly for my sake. Just to know, not forget. If I ever have posterity, I'll show them to them. You know. You need to start uh, making that posterity, Tim. Well, posterity that speaks English right now. The oh. rats only speak Korean, so they don't really. <laughs> hey, as long as they exist, that's that. I, that makes me happy. <laughs>